all of us want to protect anonymity online. What we want to tackle is anonymous abuse. And I make that distinction. We'll go on and, 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 and develop that. So I, the first thing I want to say is when, when this when online first happened, I was with Jamie 100%. I thought, this is fantastic. It facilitates democratic participation. It allows us to hear voices that you could never hear before. And I really, really you know, warmly, warmly supported. I was an advocate for it. And then... Um, I started having my own experience of it. And if I just say to you that, in a, particularly when I fought um, anti-Semitism, so I was fighting racism in the Labour Party, in a two-month period uh, when the uh, report was published on anti-Semitism in the Labour Party by the EHRC, and then there were all the comings and goings about Jeremy Corbyn's position, in that two-month period from October to, to December, I don't look at my own online abuse anymore. That uh, An organisation monitors it for me, Community Security Trust, brilliant organisation. I had 90,000 mentions, 90,000 in two months, uh, of which the majority were abusive. And I just want to share with you, and then I'm going to go on, because it's not just about, it's clearly not about me, but that brought me into it, the sort of things that could go online. So, for example, why has half of 1% of our population got so much power? Rid us of this cancer. That was uh, Jews. Um, I'm called a Zionist bitch, a Zionist stooge. A swastika is appropriate as Israel is a fascist state. And then I'm going to read one which might uh, uh, touch some sensibilities. I want her to feel despised. It's what the bitch deserves. I so hope somebody kills her. I really do. She's a lying, deceitful, hateful bitch who needs to be executed publicly so we can watch and laugh at her. The only support she deserves is a handrail to climb the gallows, the vile fucking cunt. So it's horrible. And it's not just that, that the sort of racism that I have faced. It's a, really for children and for young people. We know that um, young people, particularly that there's an increase in the suffering of mental health problems from what they get. There's been a massive increase in self-harm and in uh, suicide and in sexual exploitation, all those issues. Now, you can't actually say that there's a, 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 there's a correlation between the two, but you can, you know, it, it, you can't, sorry, you can't put a causal, causal um, uh, relationship between the two, but you can say that there's a correlation between the increase in those, uh, in those issues and uh, the growth of young people using online. Then you have things like uh, the racism. We saw that with the Euro 2020 final, where over 2,000 uh, abusive messages posted there using the N-word and uh, using monkey um, uh, and Joyce as well. Then you've got misinformation, the anti-vaxxers, the people who talk about uh, uh, things like Dettol uh, solving all the problems of coronavirus. Then you've got fraudulent uh, all the fraudulent advertisements that are on there that uh, uh, get people into absolutely appalling financial trouble and losing money. And you've got hate crime. So there's a massive, a massive, massive. It is a real problem, Jamie, and we have to tackle it. You can't just push it to one side. And nobody is pretending that tackling anonymous abuse will get rid of all abuse. Of course it won't. It's not, if, but it's an important, I think, ingredient in it. Just talk a little bit about public opinion. Most of the public now think in a recent YouGov poll, four out of five, 78%, people favoured requesting users of platforms to disclose their real identity. So there is some support for it. There is a great support for it among the public. And the other thing to talk, talk about, which I only recognised when I started getting involved in the issue, is actually the business model of the platform is based on there being a lot of abuse traffic. Because the more abuse th there is online, the more people watch it, therefore the greater the traffic, therefore the more they can uh, uh, get from their ad uh, from de uh, demands for advertising uh, from those who want to advertise on the platform. So the business model depends on 
allowing and not getting rid of online abuse. And I think that's really important as to why should there be government intervention. This isn't something that will resolve itself because it's not in their interest to do that. And can I just say something else, which I think is really important? I don't know. You know, here I was, a great supporter and promoter of anonymity. Then I start getting this horrible stuff. And actually, what it is, it, the, what people try to do through anonymous abuse is paint you as a vile, awful person. So for me, I'm a paedophile. I'm a tax avoider. I uh, have I've killed Palestinian children. Those are the sort of things that are said about me online. And therefore, they undermine my credibility. When I talk about anything, I could talk about royalty, I could talk about tax, which I try to talk about a lot. But because I'm a horrible person that can't be trusted, uh, there is no credibility in what I say. So my own freedom to participate in a democratic forum is therefore undermined by the way that the abuse undermines me personally. And I think that's an important thing to hold in, 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 in mind. So I do support anonymity. I think it's hugely important for the sort of issues that Jamie talked about, but for victims of domestic violence, children who want to go on anonymously who've been victims of child abuse. I think it's hugely important for whistleblowers, all of that. What I want to tackle, and as we develop this evening, Manvi, and I hope it becomes clear, what I want to tackle is online abuse. And I think there is a way in which you can maintain anonymity, but start to tackle that online abuse. We'll come, Steve, in just a second. Um, Margaret, you talked about credibility there and how damaging it can be. Um, I wonder if, before we move on, you could just sort of give people, I know you've, you have an organisation that filters some of the content that's coming towards you, but could you just talk people through what it feels like to be at the bottom of one of those pylons for like the course, you know, over the course of 24 hours? What does it do to a person? Oh, that's such a difficult question because you have to learn to understand that it's not the real me that they're attacking. And if I wasn't able to do that to distance myself as who I am, you know, what I care about, what I value, what my friends think about, what my interests are, if I couldn't do that, I think I'd be destroyed. So I think that's a, a, a technique I've learned in politics. They don't, this isn't the real me, that this isn't the, who I am that they're attacking. It's it's a sort of, you know, it's a false uh, view of my persona. So that's one thing. The other thing I would say to you is actually at the height of this abuse, and I'm still getting it. I still, every time I say anything, I get a torrent of abuse. Uh, what it, it, it makes you very suspicious. I think that's the main thing is I'll walk into a room and whereas I would have previously, I'm a quite outgoing, friendly sort of person, being, being confident there, I tend to look around me and think, who's on my side? Who's here to attack me? And that's something I never did before. And I do think twice about when I put stuff on. I do think, I mean, I have to, you have to be brave to do it, man. I mean, and the only way, you know, I, I won't let them defeat me, beat me. But equally, I sort of do it by trying to say, it's not the me they're talking about, horrible though that it is. And I didn't read out to you some of the most awful, vile stuff that I get. It's really, it wasn't the worst. I can't imagine how much worse it gets. Um David, where do you stand on the question of online anonymity? Well, I wouldn't ban it, um, but I would <laughs> suggest that there's a lot platforms could be doing to reduce its misuse and restrict the ability mm -hmm. of anonymous accounts to do harm. And I think there are three obvious things which all the platforms could be doing. Um, the first is offer all their users a right to verify themselves if, if they choose to do so. Uh, most of the platforms offer that to a sliver of their users. Um, some of us have got a blue tick by our, by our Twitter profiles or whatever, but that's a very elite option at the moment. I would offer transparency to all users as to who has chosen to verify and who hasn't, so we can make our own mind up about what that says about the credibility of what they're, what they're saying. We're always exhorting people to check the sources, think critically about the sources, but we deprive them of that key bit of information at the moment. And finally, I would give each user more choice and control over the extent to which they see content and interact with unverified accounts. So though no, knowing that um, anonymous accounts are more likely to, to be abusive, um, 
that's different people have a different appetite for, 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 for taking that risk and you should give those choices. Um, now, I don't think that's not a magic bullet. It wouldn't solve all abuse um, for some of the reasons Jamie has mentioned, but I think it would make a huge difference. Um, we've, we've studied at Clean Up the Internet the, the way in which anonymity is misused. Um, and it tends, the difference between um, benign uses of anonymity and harmful ones tend to center around two behaviors, which those proposals that I've just outlined would bear down on. The first is abuse, abusive use of anonymity. Often it's, un, it's about unsolicited communication. It's communication that people don't want to hear. So give people that extra control. Secondly, it's about deception and inauthenticity. It's not just that people are hiding their identities, it's that they're deceiving people about who they are. So again, make it more transparent transparent to people. But by making those, underpinning all of that by a voluntary right to, right to verify, you don't shut out those legitimate uses. People can still build a following, can still engage online with, with, with the choice to remain anonymous. It's just clearer to people who is anonymous and who isn't, and everyone can make their own mind up how much they want to interact with those accounts. Now, Jamie mentioned one study of, uh, and he quite rightly highlighted that anonymity isn't the only factor that makes people nasty online. But there's been a lot of studies since, and there's a lot of evidence that it is a really significant factor. Recently, UK internet users who'd suffered abuse were asked to, to report what, le what level of that came from anonymous accounts, and it was in the, in the 70s, so over 70% of UK victims of online abuse reported that coming from anonymous accounts. Another study on Twitter, which, you know, random control study where they gave some users um, anonymous Twitter handles and some uh, named ones and asked them to engage in sexist content, found not only were the anonymous ones more likely to retweet sexist jokes, but they were then more, even more alarmingly likely to act in a more sexist and discriminatory way offline, having the practice of that behavior online. So this, it, it has a real impact on how people behave. Um, and really, what the, the way I would frame this is that anonymity is a risk factor, and it's one which platforms make choices about how they manage through their design. And Margaret touched on the, the, the question of a business model. At the moment, platforms they aren't designing their approach to anonymity with a view to maximizing freedom of expression or safety. They're designing their platforms with a view to maximizing their profits. And uh, the, 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 uh, the kind of measures that I'm suggesting simply aren't incentivized by an advertising business model, which is seeking to maximize attention and ma maximize engagement and maximize user numbers. Um, it introduces friction. It, sheds a bit of light on how much their account, the account numbers that they can claim to advertisers are inflated by inauthentic accounts. And this is where I think we need to not leave those kind of decisions in the sole control of, of these platforms. They're too much of a public square for it to be left to that. And that's, that's where independent regulation, the introduction of some social obligations onto those platforms to manage risk factors like anonymity more responsibly, that's, that's where we've got to get to, which I'm not saying it's easy, but I think it is possible. Jamie, um, it, from David's analysis there, it sounds like it, it is having a more toxifying effect um, than, than we previously thought. Can we really manage with, with no, you know, with, with complete anonymity now? I mean, how, how do you sort of answer the, the sort of experiences that Margaret's had and the, the abuse that people are facing? How do you, how do you get around that? Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always horrified to hear the sort of abuse that people like Margaret get. So I obviously never want to defend that. The question is always, to me, the extent to which a significant difference would be made and the costs that would come with that. But David's suggestions seem to be somewhere in the middle. So we're not talking about banning it entirely or, you know, preventing people who need to remain anonymous online on social media from doing that, but rather making it slightly easier for people to see what they're doing and who's anonymous and who's not. And the reason it matters is partly because we... we we don't talk enough, I don't think, about the positives that, that the ability to be anonymous at certain times does bring. We've got to talk as well about the importance of, of encouraging a free and open internet. All around the world, regimes are closing down on the idea of a free and open internet, and it always comes down to the same thing. Make people 
be forced online to show who they are, to give their documents over, to have all of their behavior monitored. And we need to not move in that direction. So where we can find some middle ground where it helps people be slightly more critical, so you encourage us users to work out what different people are doing, then I'm, I'm definitely behind talking about that and working out how that can operate. But the, for example, the case of the racist abuse of football players in on Twitter following Euro 2020, the overwhelming majority, according to Twitter anyway, of those accounts were identified. Well, we should chat about that, Jamie. Yeah, we can. Can. <laughs> and so much of that abuse comes from non-UK accounts. So my question is always, how are we going to deal with the overwhelming majority or with the, the insignificant amount of online abuse that doesn't come from this country? How do we stop that from that, happening? Because that is there's a be... lot of there's a lot of nodding of heads going on uh, in the in the other direction. So I'm going to go to um, Margaret first. Okay, I mean just to deal with the Twitter point, I wrote to Twitter and said, could I have the basis for their uh, um, their survey? And they have refused to share it with me. I just don't think uh, you you can look at that as a legitimate finding. You know, just to say to you, Jamie, really, and I'll share that. Whoops, I'll share that that correspondence uh, with you if if that's helpful. I don't actually go along with David, as he knows. I don't go along with David's solution uh, entirely. Although I'm trying to find a, a different little way. The reason I don't go along with David's solution is twofold. First of all, I don't. I, I want to see, I don't see why the, the only way in which I can protect myself is to say I'll only talk to people who aren't anonymous, who share their identity. I don't want that. I want to deal with an anonymous uh, people who, you know, who, I do want whistleblowers to contact me. I do want victims of domestic violence and child abuse to be able to contact me. I don't want to shut that off because they don't do that. And the second argument against David's solution is that actually the police, I'm obviously in touch with the police quite a lot, Mandy, because of the nature of the abuse I get. And the police say the worst thing you can do if you're trying to identify a real threat to you individually, and I accept that that is... I mean, it isn't as remote as we thought, as we saw with the tragic death of David Amos. But the worst thing you can do is cut off the uh, the traffic that you're getting the, the online. You've got to know so that they can judge whether or not it's serious. So I don't agree with that. And let me put forward my middle way, which I know David knows, but I haven't shared with Jamie. I think what we should do is anybody who goes on a platform should actually reveal the identity, not to the platform, Jamie, not to the platform, uh, although they know all about us because we know that from the, what, the advertising that they throw at us all the time, but not to the platform, to a third-party provider. Uh, uh, and it's perfectly technically feasible. Uh, we could use something like the banks. The banks already know 99% of people who who uh, bank with that would give you the adult population. They're perfectly, so it's perfectly okay. And you are anonymous online. I want everybody to be anonymous. And the only time when you then uh, give up your right to anonymity, I think it's a right, is if you engage in abuse against other people. And at that point, the police, in pursuing illegal, Ill illegal harm online, or me, wanting to pursue a civil uh, uh, a civil case against somebody who abuses me, would have the right not to go to the platform, but the platform would then get it from the third party. So the platform hasn't got the details. The third party has, and I have the right to access that, or the police do, uh, if and when there's a, uh, if there's harmful abuse. And linked to that, two other things that have to go with it. At the moment, the, the law in relation to online harms is too limited. And actually, Nadine Doris made a statement over the weekend where she tightened up and introduced three new, uh, uh, she's going to introduce on the online harms bill, three new offences, which would make it much tougher and would make it much more difficult, for example, to have revenge porn, to have a promotion of suicide, to have actually mm -hmm. sexual exploitation, people smuggling, all that stuff would be then created as a criminal offence. And that's really important. So I really welcome what she did. I should say, Mandy, that this debate is not a partisan debate. 
that, you know, I'm working on a cross-party uh, uh, basis with other people. And then the final thing I want to say is I think because of the way this, this is a business model for the online platforms, it's no good fining them zillions because that just becomes a business cost against their business, uh, against their business. And they're making so much money. They, you know, even the, what we're talking about wouldn't hurt them, harm them that much. I think you have to get director liability and responsibility into uh, uh, the legal framework that we would do for for uh, uh, monitoring and, and regulating online harms. Uh, and I do this from my tax, you know, my tax justice work. That it's no good getting at the corporations. That doesn't change. No good getting at the banks. No good getting at any of these people because that simply doesn't change their behavior. If you introduce individual director liability where they break the law, so with these new offenses where they don't take stuff off that could do all this massive damage, then they are individually liable. So I would. Go, it's a different solution to David's, but I think it's the only one that is sustainable. But I accept that, Jamie, I want to protect anonymity. But if you're going to do that, you have to deal with the online harms.